But of course, I always feel proud as a teacher. That's what motivates all of us and takes us forward. Thank you, Professor uh, Sanjeev Kausikji, for a crisp but very elaborate, excellent content. The gist, what all these participants are needed. He gave it in a prescription exactly about the research, various kinds of research, possibilities, the transformations happening in India, everything. <clears throat> My regards to Dr. Shafali Nagpal, our head of HRD Center, our very, very unique center. Many universities do not have such a center. A very active, effervescent team under her. Number may be less, but activities are plenty. The entire year, we have a lot of programs. Dr. Mahesh Sharmaji, being the coordinator of the activities here, and other uh, uh, professors, teachers, students, who are all, uh, I mean, converged in this program and this morning. Because I may not be able to name everyone. It happens in this kind of a virtual platform. But everybody is uh, equally respectable and equally important. So my welcome and regards to each one of you. I am fundamentally a mechanical engineer uh, specialized in printing. So in my last maybe four decades of academic activities, I have seen the transition, how it happened. I think 80% uh, of whatever I learned in my college days are either obsolete or insufficient. This is what happened in everybody's field, I am sure. So either you have to redefine or restructure whatever you do, otherwise you will become obsolete in the market. It's very clear. And the topic in discussion is research methods and the uh, modern educational transformations. This has a lot of relationship, of course, because India has just implemented NEP 2020, which is going to give us a lot of opportunities. The first reflection is the innovation index jumping what happened to India in the last couple of years, which you can see. Because of number of startups, the research opportunities, a lot of changes are happening. But I want to look at this from a scientist perspective, especially as an engineer or a uh, basic scientist, I think science has changed a lot. It has become uh, a way more precise and accurate, especially with the basic sciences, in very particular to basic sciences. Because we have abandoned our uh, old ways of searching for simplistic answers to develop a more complete picture of the world, as we should. We are much more firmly rooted in mathematics and scientific methodologies of research that shapes the said picture, what we are talking about. Sometimes uh, doing this betrays a portion of intuition, what we call Something in the earlier terms in scriptures, what we call it as revelation. You call it as revelation, breakthrough or intuition, whatever it is. Now, because of the high-end scientific activities, it a little bit betrays this. There is no doubt it is a truth. Because this happens so much, so in all fundamental sciences, because almost all the ordinary folk simply think of a science as uh, derailed for that reason. So this is uh, resolved though when pe people actually uh, devote themselves to higher learning 
and actually understand uh, what is going on. So that is uh, another thing that has changed about science. When I talk about science, you don't need to differentiate it. It is both objective science and subjective science. Nowadays, we never differentiate between these two. Because I'm sure in the coming time, I lead basically a technical university here and a general university, BPS, both. So even in this technical university, in the coming time, in the near future, I am expecting a, a psychology professor or an economics professor or a philosophy professor teaching in my mechanical department or in a medical college. This is going to happen because there is not much difference between the so-called differentiated uh, subjective sciences and objective sciences in the coming time. The best reflection is when I did my engineering, I had almost 95% subjects highly technical. And there were very few management subjects, HR related subjects or uh, social sciences. But now it has gone up to 20% or more. And UGC has recently given the option to everyone that 40% of the content should be online. It is up to the student to choose from where, what course program he should take up. So that's the right way of learning. You don't need to restrict a particular person. This must be learned and that should not be learned for a particular degree program. It's more like a supermarket. You go and buy what you want. Education is something like that. The purpose of education and research is not to make anyone a failure. The purpose of education is only to make everyone a winner. So anyone can become a researcher now. You don't need any basic qualifications. India has done that base work to develop every individual, 137 crore people to become a researcher in his level, wherever he is and whatever he is. So this is what is happening in the uh, entire field now. So that's another thing that has changed about science. In order to describe the universe in its absolute uh, exactness, you need a lot of intricacy. I mean, I'm not talking from the scripture point of view. If you look from the uh, anatomical point of view, uh, for the biological sciences, uh, I mean, anatomically for the biological sciences and uh, mathematics for the physical sciences. And most of the time, to get to the bleeding edge of the frontier of research nowadays, you need to have passed through serious tertiary education. In the sense, which college you have done, where you have done, that's the time the real fire which is put in your belly. It's the real seed which get into you. So in modern times, everything is divided into sub-disciplines now. And becoming uh, in a doctorate in the field means having been specialized in one particular aspect of the field. For example, uh, specialization in cardiology for doctors, or maybe astrophysics for physicists, maybe a specific area for a management expert, which I can't talk about it. Earlier, ma ma marketing was a single field. Today, you have n number of diversions in which you can focus. It is up to you. So I have seen in my time, uh, three decades ago, four decades ago, uh, focusing marketing is one single word. But today, you have n number of disciplines. Maybe Professor uh, Kaushik would be able to explain it much more being a management expert. So the reason for the specialization is that the breadth of what we know now is simply so vast and that it's simply no longer feasible to learn everything about one particular subject. That's gone. Even uh, psychology is starting to get this way, which you know it. Uh, when, uh, I mean, the amount of research being done in uh, maybe a cognitive science or behavioral sciences is always amazed me what happened in last 10 years or 20 years. So you will see lots of amalgamations of multidisciplinary activities in every research. So differentiating, I believe in another 50 years, probably you may not differentiate all these teachers. I am uh, envisaging or imagining a day where every professor will sit in a single hall 
where you will see a physics professor, a sociology professor, and an HR expert and an artificial intelligence expert, because everybody has to talk about humanity and what we need to do. End of the day, if this is not there, there is no meaning in research at all. So speaking of research, so much of it is being done now that it is really unbelievable, especially in the last few decades. So we are making progress in so many things on so many fronts that it's absolutely astounding. And the more we understand the world, the more easier it becomes for us to explore it. And that is what is happening. And the new technologies are helping all of us. Like me, I'm an engineer, I told you. Engineers come in and they utilize all the new found knowledge and uh, knowledge and theories what they develop uh, to develop some technology to further empower a researcher or a common man to do research in much more deep. That is what is my job. This is what every engineer has to do, whether it is for a mechanical field or a medical field. This is what the application-oriented technology development is the purpose of every engineer. So we make new developments and discover new things in science almost daily now. And the only reason most people don't normally see it is because uh, many of them don't understand it. That's the reason. The biological sciences in particular are leading strong with that right now with the gene editing technology you talk about. It only keeps getting more and more sophisticated now. Now, AI-based doctor can even predict uh, a disease, what you are going to get. Maybe it can predict after three years or four years, you, there is a possibility for you to get a cancer. And you can do the treatment today itself. You know that the uh, bold Hollywood actress, uh, Angela Jolie, she already removed her breast thinking that after 11 years, there is a possibility for her to get a cancer. So she did the treatment today itself. This is what an AI-based systems, modern technologies, which are helping us. So we are on the verge of now developing nanotechnology that can operate as a tiny little doctor and fix problems in the body on the molecular scale. Just imagine. So you can send these robots into the veins of an individual, it goes and cleans up your arteries. So in the future, in the coming time, probably you may not hear any heart problems or heart blockages and no one will tell you don't eat this, don't eat that. That's a time which is going to come. And you see the progress in 1921, the average lifespan of an Indian was almost 37 years. And today it has gone up to 64. And if you go to states like uh, southern states like Kerala, it's such 74. An average lifespan longevity of a female in Kerala is 74 to 75. And the gents are 70 to 73. And probably you may laugh at and the highest alcohol consumption is also in that state. So whether this has any relationship, I don't know. I am not promoting or encouraging anyone to start consuming alcohols. No, but thing is, Japanese, almost all of them take fennies and same kind of uh, th th the best longevity they have. So we have a lot of misconceptions in our brain, which we have to take out. Scientifically, we have to look into. Generally, we propagate you eat only vegetarian, you will become healthy. It is nonsense. I'm a vegetarian. With all those things I'm telling you, their food is just a habit which you decide. What Japanese don't eat, I don't know. Anything available in this planet Earth, they eat. Their average lifespan longevity is 84. Very, very comfortable people. They don't fight with anybody. Compassionately handle almost all the things. So it is time for all of us to think everything, scientifically look at it, remove all the pseudo-scientific thinking and get into real scientific research. Whenever I use this scientific research, scientific research, uh, don't uh, misunderstand me. I'm not just talking for my engineering field or fundamental sciences, equally I'm talking for social sciences because social scientists also have a huge role in the coming time, very clear. So this is the way nanotechnology which is developing and which is uh, taking the world in the coming time. So I, when you look at physics, when they talk about uh, quantum physics, something like a Casimir effect, if you ask a physics specialist, he will tell you, 
my might just hold an answer for you for all this so probably the most important change that indicates how far we have come with science is how it is all together now this is very important so we never used to be that way but now new observations are made and they can have uh, quite a lot of ramifications on multidisciplinary issues so science has come a long way my dear friends and it is only getting stronger stronger and stronger and stronger that is why we don't just get into intuitions and revelations and all those things you don't need it you have a better way to understand the situation and make a possible predictions in the coming time so that is why people should be keeping their faith in science now more than ever now look at the case of corona how it has come and how we solved it only science and research the power of the country that helped all of us to solve it in the way what it what, how india has handled it and one of the biggest changes has been the increasing use of uh, very large research teams now I, this is one biggest change i have seen in research in last four decades if you look earlier all individual oriented or a small team was looking into researchers but now it's a huge large research teams sometimes as collaborations and other times as a very large institutions together pondering on a single topic to find out a reason the biggest example in the one month ago when modi ji went to uk he announced a concept called one sun one world one grid can we ever think of such thing because there is only one sun that sun is giving energy to the entire world and he suggested there is only one world why don't we have a one grid so you don't need to store it anywhere full time it produces and energizes the entire world so this is the thought process in research which is going to come in the coming time and concepts like artificial intelligence cyber physical systems maybe big data virtual reality uh, augmented reality a digital twin what you call all these are going to play a very very big role in precision oriented research one big advantage what we got with the ai is decision making the most intelligent person in this universe can have an average prediction i mean correctiveness could be 64 to 65 percent but an ai based decision system can have an average accuracy of 74 to 75 percent so why should i depend on an individual i don't need to i have a system which can process millions of data at one time and tell you what it is my friend a doctor in germany i asked him how he does it suppose you go to him as a patient he takes your scanning and while taking the observations of your body parameters he put your scanned image into his system and this will be matched with uh, millions of similar cases in the world and also it compares with the, what treatment has given which part of the world and what was the result what was the effectiveness and in another 3 minutes time he must have done a consulting of millions of similar cases and he will prescribe you what treatment you should take imagine the accuracy earlier days it was not possible at all this is what decision making and accuracy especially in medical sciences and other sciences which are going to come and high energy physics was the first to adopt this style i tell you because physics was always leading in a big way which you know that what is it? they physicists are the i am not a physicist my dream was to become a physicist which i couldn't i i was not that much intelligent to get into physics but i got into some engineering and it the real physicists are the people they unravel the universe and they help us to understand how the universe exists and function so the maybe that's the reason why high energy physics was the first to adopt this style as a gigantic particle accelerators required large teams you know that about the particle experiment what they were doing there so the human genome project brought this approach to biology to in a second stage after physics Uh, i think biology got into that another major change is the extensive applications of computers and computer modeling today i mean it must have started in somewhere in 1980s maybe a few biology chemistry labs would have been used to some i don't know but now it has become much much more uh, prominent in the uh, coming time 
So computer modeling and searching is extensive and with large data fields such as genomics and uh, proteomics, the vast amount of data just can't be processed without a computer. Suppose most of our research students, you ask, without the help of a software or a computer, most of the data processing is highly impossible. I did my all still remember my PhD time, whether it is a regression analysis or a chi-square test or whatever you do, I did everything mathematically because mm -hmm. I was not having that systat or your mini tab or software, what is needed those days. So I just did it with my help of my statistical mm -hmm. professor. Today, you don't need it. You go to the latest version of mini tab, which will tell you for a particular kind of data, what is the best way of analysis, which model you should adopt and how you take inference out of the data, what you get. All this has become so simple, so accurate and so great. So the current researchers are lucky. I feel jealous of them. I should have born now. This is what I feel because the kind of accuracy and precision what you can get in your research is unbelievable. And uh, super resolution microscopy is available, which beats all diffraction limit now in physics. So you have that there and would be impossible without in inexpensive, powerful computing. Computing in the sense earlier, the programmers, my both brothers were programmers. Those days when they want to recruit somebody as a programmer, they were looking who can write a short program. But no one bothers because the uh, ability of a computer is maybe a million times more than that processing. So whether you write another uh, 1,000, 10,000 lines more has not a meaning now because all processing fraction of second it happens. So this is what is happening. And it goes on. And computers and other uh, cyber physical systems, we are already in the uh, industry 4.0, which everyone knows it, how cyber physical systems uh, change the entire way how systems are functioning. So our students who are attending this program, they should also look into these changes, what is happening around the globe how they should adopt into their respective field. Just because somebody is from a subjective science, I'm a researcher in philosophy. What is there to do with AI? Don't think that. There is an application. There is no doubt about it. You have a lot of things to do with all this. So the success of a real researcher will be how you are, bring, how you are efficient in bringing these modern analytical methodologies and technologies into your research to make it... Uh, as precise as possible. So I'm sure the next one program will discuss the ability you will hear from experts uh, who will guide you the right way how to do your research. Because the future of this country is with all these young researchers and uh, uh, Indian government has a huge plan for that. Because now the world, 40 years ago, nobody was talking about India and China in research. Today, they know about it. You see the efficacy of our own vaccines, what we produce now, whether it is co-vaccine or what. Earlier, they don't want to accept it. Today, they are telling almost 90% of the variants, co-vaccine is so effective. It is manufactured in India. So we have all the potential. We have all the power. And these youngsters who are in the research field, they are much, much more intelligent and uh, uh, efficient than uh, people like me because... We didn't have that kind of uh, information that time. Today, information is ubiquitous. Everywhere, everything is available. So there is no dearth for information. Only thing is you have to put your uh, interest in that and that fire in your belly, that's going to take you forward. So with that note, let me wish a great week ahead and a great learning. Thank you so much for organizing.